everyone, it's Rob B here with Rob D, and you are listening to the Property Podcast. It's mortgage update time, and yes, once again, there is so much happening in the market. Is it getting better, or are things just continuing to get worse? Well, I'm about to find out, and we bring you the most shocking news headline we've had on a podcast this year. Welcome to the Property Podcast, where every week we take a little bit of time out from being in the property industry full time, all day, every day, gaining knowledge so we can pass some of it your way for free. Mortgages are the topic of the moment. and As an investor, you have to understand what's going on. And that's why this episode is going to be so valuable. So do make sure you stick around and stick to the end where if you've had this year's holiday and you're already thinking ahead to next year, we've got something that'll help you out with that. An absolute shocking news headline from The Guardian today. I can't believe I'm going to have to read this one out on there. It just gets crazier. Okay, the UK property market is not crashing. It's proving rather resilient. Rob, the world's gone mad. What has happened? (laughs) (laughs) I like the way that there's now so much talk about the market crashing. You're almost like blind to it now. The way to stand out now and get clicks is to say it's not crashing. And I'm going to actually read part of this out because it actually just sounds very sensible and echoes a lot of what we have been saying. So Britain has an unhealthy obsession with house prices, Rob. We are definitely part of that problem and we are definitely obsessed, particularly during relatively rare periods where they're falling rather than rising. So news that a cost of a home has fallen for four months in a row will inevitably lead to speculation about a property crash. And it goes on to say, it isn't happening. Yes, it's August and there's not much news around, but even so, the idea that a 2.4% annual fall means the property market is in crisis is nonsense. The article goes on from there, but it just really highlights that there's not a lot of news around property prices and a modest fall over the last 12 months is far from a crash. And that's all taken place in the landscape where interest rates have gone from 1.25% to 5.25%. Now, we've talked extensively about how in real terms, and that's the Secret Property Crash episode and video that we've done, which we highly, highly recommend that you even go and listen to or watch. We've talked about how property values are falling, and that is super, super interesting. But the headline price of property isn't really doing anything at all. And I'm sure this article isn't the first, but it's the first I've seen where they're just saying, hey, you know what? We've tried to make some big headlines out of these numbers, but actually... There's not a lot happening here. There is a lot happening beneath the surface, but the overall headline of property prices, that number is actually the least dramatic thing that's probably happened in the last 12 months when it comes to property and the economy. And that's why our monthly update on what's happening in the market is so important because we get into all that detail. But as I've said, the property prices, the headline number that we keep obsessing over, that we talk about, you talk about, the nation talks about, most of the papers talk about, is actually the least exciting number out there right now, the least exciting thing to be happening in the property market. Well, there you go. The Property Podcast, proudly part of the problem since 2013. And I'm sure property prices will be talked about more than a little bit tonight because we're having our first ever Property Hub Select event. So if you're coming along to that one, looking forward to seeing you. It's going to be really good fun. And if you don't know what Property Hub Select is, then just go along to propertyhub.net slash select. Right, let's get into our main topic, because as Rob's already said, interest rates and mortgages have been owning the headlines over the last few months for obvious reasons. We maintain our view that mortgages are such a powerful tool for property investors, but using mortgages has got a bit more complicated recently. So whether you're buying or you're refinancing, you really need to know what's going on. And ideally, you need to know what's going to happen in the future, which obviously none of us can. But someone who's got a better chance than any of us of picking through the market, figuring out what the best move is to make right now and what might be coming next is Kelly Rule from Serious Property Finance, who we've had on the podcast multiple times now, a recurring guest. And because she's always got so much great knowledge to share with us. So Kelly, thank you for joining us. We've just seen that inflation has come down a little bit more than expected. How has this affected the market? This has had a great impact on the market, thankfully. The reduction in inflation has meant that the swap rates, which is how five-year fixed rates are priced, are starting to come back down again. Over the past few weeks, we've had lenders reduce product lines week on week. Not only are we able to start quoting some competitive rates for our clients, but also go back over any pipeline applications and pass on these reductions to clients who are already proceeding on high rates such as 7 or even 8%. So do you think we've seen the peak of interest rates? 
I hope so, but I say this every day, nobody knows. The Bank of England have just reviewed the base rate again, which has now increased to 5.25%. This doesn't usually have a knock-on effect to fixed rates, especially five-year rates, as these are priced slightly differently. And as an example, we had a lender reduce their entire product range as of Friday last week, even with the base rate increase a day prior. How busy is the mortgage market right now? Are you seeing a lot of people buying or is it mostly people just desperately trying to refinance? It is starting to pick back up. I've been quoting numerous purchases and refinances over the past couple of months. But when clients saw the high rates, they decided to hold fire on buying that property. Refinances have been tricky. The increased stress rates on the rental income has caused many deals not covering the required loan amount to refinance the existing debt. And in these circumstances, a product transfer with their existing lender has been the best option as no stress test tends to be carried out when you're not taking out any additional borrowing. Although now that the rates are starting to come back down again, it's meaning more deals stack up and it is getting busier, which is great. That is great. Okay, so if someone is looking to buy at the moment, what kind of conditions should they expect? For example, where are the banks currently stress testing at? It's slightly different depending on whether you're buying in your own personal name or a limited company. Limited companies is fairly simple. You need 125% cover on your rental via your mortgage payments. On a five-year fixed deal, majority of lenders will calculate the mortgage payments using the interest rate you've applied for. But for a two-year fixed rate or a variable rate, then the interest rate is stressed up. And this can be anything from 6% upwards. Due to this, we tend to have to reduce the loan amount down on these product ranges. If you're buying in personal names, typically lenders stress at 125% if you're a basic rate taxpayer or 140 or 145% if you are a higher or additional rate taxpayer. And the same rules apply on the rate. Okay, so that's for purchases. But what about those who are remortgaging? What kind of options are available at the moment? More lenders have bought out a reduced stress of 100% for what we call a pound for pound remortgage. This is when you are only borrowing the same amount as your existing loan and not raising any extra capital. This really helps because it means that we can, majority of the time, be able to raise the loan amount required for these refinancing customers. Does this mean you can get a better rate or does it simply mean that getting the finance is just an easier process? The rate is still the same. It just means that for those properties where your yield is a little bit higher and the stress test is a little bit tighter, we are more in line to be able to get that loan amount that you need to be able to refinance your existing debt. So we just have more options for you. And following on from that, is it worth looking at transferring your mortgage onto another product with the same lender? When you're approaching the end of your discounted or fixed period, then you can apply for a product transfer with most lenders. Not all lenders offer this. So do do your homework before you perhaps go ahead with a new lender to make sure that that is an option for you in the future. This has recently been the best option for a lot of existing landlords. It's a really simple, light touch process. No valuation and no legal fees are required. So they go through really quickly. Property Up Select is brand new, but we are loving the feedback that we're getting already. Join us for in-person exclusive events, online masterclasses, and so much more. If you want to join Property Up Select, then all you have to do is become a client of one of our services, and they are great services. So go to propertyhub.net forward slash select to find out more. So if your fixed period is about to end, would it be considered a risky gamble to go onto the variable rate of your product for a few months to see if rates start to fall and then lock into a product with an attractive rate? I get asked this a lot. And yes, it is a risky gamble, but a risk a small handful of landlords are taking. If you have a healthy cash buffer behind you and are prepared for high mortgage payments in the short term, then this could be a good strategy. Although we just don't know how long it will be until the base rate will finally stabilise. If you are thinking of taking this route, then I suggest looking at products that have no early repayment charges, giving you the flexibility to refinance at any time without incurring a penalty. Is there any expectation of what rates will fall to and when we can expect that to happen? Are we looking at two years to get to a rate of 4%, for example? I honestly don't think we'll get back to as low as rates were in the late 2% mark on buy-to-lets again. I think we will stabilise around 4.5% and that will be our new normal. 
We were hoping that would be towards the end of this year, but the spike we saw over the last couple of months seems to have delayed that. So quite possibly another year or two, in my opinion. And what about right now? What kind of rates and products can investors expect to find in the market? We now have buy-to-let lenders back in the early 5% mark on fixed rates, which is great to see again. I always suggest running your numbers at 5.5%. And if your deal works at this level, then you should be fine. One thing we are seeing is really high arrangement fees, especially on limited company products. Since the last base rate started to increase circa 12 months ago, a lot of deals weren't stacking at 75% loan to value. So a large portion of the lender market then reduce their rates down and increase their arrangement fees up as the deal works out more favourable on a stress test and more deals start stacking at 75% again. This also has become the new normal. Rewind 12 months ago, arrangement fees were circa 1%. Now the average is 5%, which is crazy. I really hope these fees will start to come down as the rates do. If there are any investors out there who are getting a little worried about what they should do at the end of their fixed period, what should they be doing right now? Yes. My suggestion is be prepared and be organised. Start searching the market six months before your expiry to get an idea of what you can get. Speak to a mortgage broker who should not only be sourcing the whole of market for you, but they should also be including your product transfer and further advance options with your existing lenders as well for a comparison. Ideally, you are wanting to be starting the application no later than three months prior to your expiry. Once your fixed rate ends, you will revert to the lender's standard variable rate, which are circa 9% at the moment, and you don't want to risk not having your next rate lined up in time. It's not all doom and gloom, though. The market really is picking up again. And as long as you're on top of things, then you won't get caught out. Well, thank you, Kelly, for your wonderful insights. There is so much happening in the market right now, Rob. We never used to do whole episodes dedicated to mortgages, but with the landscape changing almost daily at the moment, I think it's so important that we get experts on like Kelly to help guide all our listeners through what is a tricky market right now for mortgages. Yeah, and it is changing month to month, it really feels like that inflation figure comes out and that number changes products. It it changes how people are feeling about the market. I can't remember a time when from one month to the next, everything can just be completely different. And I don't think this is a reason to not be active in the market if that's something that you were planning to do anyway. But it does mean you really do have to pay close attention, keep informed with what's going on. And above all, of course, work with a broker who's keeping on top of the market too. Because when the market is changing day to day as it is right now, that's more valuable than ever. Absolutely, Rob. But what is pleasing to see is over the last few mortgage updates that we've had, things are improving. It's not a rapid change, but it's a slow improvement. We've had some crazy volatility over the last 12 months, but just a bit of certainty in the market is already making a difference to the mortgage market, and long may that continue. Okay, time now before we end the show for Hub Extra, that time when we give you a little tip, a little resource, something extra to take away with you. And Rob, this week, a website that's got two of my favourite words in it, cheap and holiday. (laughs) sold yes well this is a website full of resources actually it's a friend of producer dan so that's why we're bringing it to you rob and i haven't yet used it but i'm already very interested by the article free hotel upgrade template for your next holiday yes please who doesn't like a free upgrade so august is holiday season and you may have already had your holiday this year but if you are already thinking of your next holiday i know i certainly am then you might want to check out cheap holiday expert Dot com, where there's a load of hacks, guides, templates, all loads of good stuff. So check it out. I go and support producer Dan's friend who's got what seems like a really cool website. Go check it out. Well, that is it for this week. Thank you so much to Kelly for coming and sharing her knowledge on the podcast today. And thank you to you for listening. And if you're not a regular listener, then this would be a great time to hit follow on iTunes and Spotify and make sure every episode comes automatically to your phone because we've got some great stuff coming up starting next week. So we'll see you next Thursday. Until then, have a great week. Bye bye. Bye bye.